Miriam Weilenmann, University of Vienna, as I announced before, entanglement detection beyond the measuring fidelities. So let's welcome Miriam. Thanks a lot for the introduction and, and also thanks to the organizers for, for setting up uh, this nice conference. It's been very interesting so far. Um, uh, and so um, I will speak about a work that is joint with Ben, David, Edgar and Miguel, who are also based in Vienna. Um, and the paper is not quite that new anymore, so it's already, already published and, and available if, if anyone is interested. Okay, um, so I want to start with a very short motivation. So what we wanted to do in this project is, is to understand properties of entangled states, and in particular, the, the entanglement dimension of states. Okay, and, and there are standard ways to do this. Um, um, usually if you want to detect, for instance, the d-dimensional entanglement, you would do this with witnesses and, and there are standard constructions of such witnesses. And so then what we wanted to understand with this project is essentially um, when do these standard constructions apply and when maybe not. And then also if these don't apply, can we find other systematic ways to also find, find linear in this case? Um, um, entanglement dimension witnesses. Okay, and, and this is what, what the talk is going to be about. So I want to start with a quick introduction or, or recap um, of, of entanglement dimension. Um, so uh, uh, we can, uh, so this is the definition that we use. So if we have, have a pure state, then of course we can always write it in terms of its Schmidt decomposition. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, we can look at those Schmidt coefficient and, and, and find the, the number of, of non-zero Schmidt coefficients, which in this case is, is the Schmidt rank. So for a pure state, this is the Schmidt rank and also so the, the entanglement dimension. But now if we have a mixed state, then we can look, we can write this in terms of a con convex combination of pure states. And if each of them has at most D non-zero Schmidt coefficients, then we say that, that the state has at most Schmidt rank D. And for this, we introduce a symbol, which is, which is SD here, um, which, which um, is quite nice because it's a convex set. And so, so we'll use this later. Okay, um, and so we can see this here. So S1 in this case would be, would be separable and then we have entangled states, but, but distinguish them as, it, as with respect to this D. And now D-dimensional entanglement, um, um, a state is D-dimensionally entangled if, if it is in SD, but not in SD minus one. So really kind of the different colors here are the, uh, the, the, the uh, different entanglement dimension. Okay, and now I've already said there are standard ways to, to do this. So if for instance, we have a state here and this is four dimensionally entangled um, and we want to certify this, the natural thing to do is, is what we also do when we do usual entanglement detection. So we find a witness that defines us some, some um, hyperplane that distinguishes this state from all state in, in SD minus one. So that are at most three dimensionally entangled. And there is a standard construction for such witnesses, namely a standard thing to do is to, to look at the fidelity with respect to some, some pure state. So this can, for instance, be some pure four dimensionally entangled state. Um, and, then, and then in this way, we can, we can construct a witness in this case. Okay, and so now what we wanted to understand first is, is when this maybe doesn't apply or if there are situations where it doesn't. And so for this, what we introduced is what we call unfaithful states. So we call a state D unfaithful if for all of the witness from, from the construction before, um, this, this witness doesn't work for that state, okay? And we introduce another set, um, um, which now we call UD, and this is also a convex set. Now we can see just from the definition for, for all states that are at most three-dimensionally entangled in, in this case, um, these states will obey this condition. So, so the set U4 in this case contains the set S3 that, that we've introduced before. But the region that we're really interested in is, is kind of the region, region between this orange and, 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 and the boundary of, of U4 where we have states that are actually have a higher entanglement dimension but that we cannot certify in this way. Okay, and so, so now to, to try to describe these states, what we do is we introduce a criterion that to, to, to try to approximate this set uh, UD or U4 in this case. 
Okay, and, and this is what our, what our criterion looks like. So this is an inner approximation to this set um, and, and a state is in this inner approximation if we can find um, uh, operators MA and MB and, and some scalar here, such that all of these uh, constraints are, are satisfied for D. So this, um, so this comes from a semi-definite program. So, so we can really, for a state, we can, we can, we can check this easily. Okay. And so now we can look at this. Um, and, and the first question uh, uh, maybe we looked at is, is to see how many states um, are actually in those sets, uh, UD. And we did this for U2. Um, and this is kind of what comes out. So in, in the case of U2, this is just asking whether we can detect any entanglement uh, and, and the dimension uh, isn't really, really of, of interest in that case. Um, and what, what we find, um, is, is that if we, if we follow our criterion from before, actually, as we increase the local dimension of the system, the percentage of states that, that are within, within um, uh, the, the unfaithful states, according to, to our criterion, increases rapidly. Okay. Um, and so, so these are kind of two different measures according to, to which we've sampled. So this stands for Hilbert Schmidt, and this is, this is Beers. Um, and here we also um, um, denote the, the percentage of states that, that are PPT, because really what we're interested in is only the, 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 the part of the set that is outside separable in this case. And so we can really see that, that, that if we increase the dimension soon, all states we, we randomly sample are entangled, but at the same time not detectable with, with this type of weakness. Okay, and, and then a second thing, we wanted to, to understand is what happens if we have if we have pure states that we know are, are detectable with these fidelities well, um, and we have noise. Okay, so in this case, we, this example is for, for the maximally entangled state, um, and then we had noise in, in different dimensional systems. So what we see here is, is then as we increase the noise threshold here, here in D, um, in all except dimension two, we will, we will get to a point where actually the state is still entangled, but unfaithful. So, so while, while we, the state is still entangled, we can again not use uh, this type of fidelity witnesses um, for some regions. So this is kind of the, the light blue, bluish green, green region here. And S1 here just stands for PPT because again, at some point, um, we, we, the states may also get separable. Okay, and R is just a different criterion that I don't have time to go into, but, but it's, it's from this paper. So it's, it's uh, kind of the, a criterion that already exists and this is ours, so, so where is it? Okay, so, so this is the main thing I wanted to say about, about uh, these unfaithful states. And then of course, there is the question of, since there are so many unfaithful states, what, what can we do to detect entanglement dimension? Uh, in these cases. And this is the, the second part of the talk. Okay, so um, what we came up with in this case um, is, is a semi-definite hierarchy that approximates those sets SD that we've seen. Um, so we have here, here as K increases, we get a better and better outer approximation of the set SD. Okay, and, and this may look a bit, look a bit uh, uh, random at first. So, so I want to start with this part actually where, where we see uh, where this comes from. So if we first look at just the pure state, then again, if it has entanglement uh, dimension at most D, um, we can write it in a Schmidt decomposition in a form like that. But now we can come up with a different way to write this state. So we can take uh, a state uh, omega one on system A and an A prime. So this is here um, and a vector omega two, which is not a state because we now don't have, have any, any normalization, um, but this is on, on system B prime and B. Okay. And now if we take the product of these two and then project onto, onto, onto this, this uh, projector here, and we see that actually what we get is the state uh, psi i. Okay, so a different way to, to write psi is in terms of a, a product of these and then, and then a projection. Okay, and now if we have a mixed state where we have a convex combination of these psi i, um, we can find such a model for, for each of the psi i. And then overall, what this, what this amounts to is that we take here a, a separable operator 
um, and uh, 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 projector here, and, and what we end up with on, on these A and B systems, again, again is, is the state we're interested in. And this is what we call a separable model for the state. Okay, and so then what this set says is essentially just, just what I've just explained. So, so we require that, that for a state uh, to be in such an approximation that there is such a sigma, um, such that if we, if we do the projection, we get the state, um, the sigma has to have trace D, which, which comes from this fact that this is not normalized. Um, and if we divide by, by D, this is actually a separable state. Okay, so, so SK here denotes the DPS hierarchy for separability. And so for each level of this hierarchy, we, we add a bunch of constraints and get a level of, of a hierarchy for, for the D-dimensional entanglement. Okay. Um, there are two more things I wanted to say. So the first is this fact about the DPS hierarchy for which I also provide, provide references here. Um, in fact, if we set D equal to one here, the constraints we've introduced do, do absolutely nothing. And, and this is just the DPS hierarchy. So it's really just a, a direct generalization with additional constraints. Um, the other thing is then um, we know how the DPS hierarchy converges and that's from this, we can also get the converges convergence statement for, for our hierarchy. Okay, so, so, so um, this is a, a way to, to approximate those, those sets as D. Um, Sorry, Miriam. Yeah. There is a question in the chat that is a clarification. Maybe it's good to ask it now instead yes. of waiting until the end. So the question is like, um, is the notion of unfaithfulness defined with respect to the particular witnesses introduced at the beginning of the talk? And uh, I guess, the answer um, is yes, I guess. Particular weaknesses, meaning? Weaknesses, weaknesses. The particular weaknesses introduced at the beginning of the talk. I'm not sure I so understand. The definition of, unfaith, of states that are unfaithful was yes. defined with respect to the weaknesses that you introduced. Oh, at the, the witnesses, right? yes, exactly. Yes. 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 yes, yes, exactly. So, so, so this, yes. So it means that if we have a witness of, of this particular form, um, mm. and for all witnesses, which is why the, yeah, I have the omega D here refers to actually this particular type of witness, yes. So it doesn't work. So these states could be detected by some other witnesses that yes. are not those of that particular form. Perfect. Exactly. Thanks a lot. Yes. <laughs> and, and this is what we're doing. So, so we, we try to yeah. find other witnesses that are still linear. Um, yes. And at the same time, not of this form. And I mean, there are other 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 uh, witnesses of this type as well. But I think what what is quite nice is that this hierarchy gives us a systematic way also for any state to construct construct them. Okay, thanks for the question. Um, I think this was important to clarify. Uh, okay, so yes, so we have this hierarchy, um, and now we can look at examples. Okay, so now, now this is an example that, that maybe also helps for the clarification. So this is a state that, that if we write it down, we can see that the way it's written, it's, it's definitely at most three-dimensionally entangled because we have this decomposition. Okay, at the same time, we can now look at our criterion for, for unfaithfulness with respect to this, those, those fidelity type witnesses. Um, and we can see that, that in fact, we cannot detect that it's three-dimensionally entangled with those. We can detect that it's entangled, but not three-dimensionally. Um, and so now we can use this hierarchy and, and to see um, whether actually the state could be written maybe with a different decomposition as a two-dimensionally entangled state. And now if you do this, what, what you find that is that, that this is actually not the case, okay? Um, and so whenever we have a state now, we can, we can kind of run this, run this, this thing and, and, and check if, if we can prove that it's outside of S, D minus one, for instance. Okay, now um, one thing that is maybe not so satisfying is that now we, for each state, we have to really, really run this hierarchy. Um, and, and if we do this, um, so the way it's written here, it doesn't directly give us, for instance, a witness that then if we perturb the state a little, we could still apply, for instance. And also if you think about uh, doing an experimental certification that this is three-dimensionally entangled, um, this kind of tells us that, that we're not really, really so sure what to measure even to, to certify this. 
So what we want now is, is to use this to construct, construct entanglement witnesses. Okay, and, and because each, each um, level here can be written as a, as a semi-definite program, we can also go to the dual of this. So there is, for each of them, of those sets, there is a dual, and, and this will give us a hierarchy. And what happens if we do this is actually that we can, we can get a, a ca characterization of a hierarchy of entanglement witnesses. And this now, now grows with, with K. So we get, for each K, we get, we get more and more um, now entanglement witnesses for, for D plus one in this case. Okay. Um, and, and so, so in fact, from the hierarchy I've introduced, we can really do this and, and extract witnesses. Now, as a last thing, um, I, I want to kind of illustrate how this could be applied, for instance. Um, and for this, uh, I will refer to, to some, some kind of follow-up work, work that we did also together with an experiment. Um, and I think this, this just shows that, that this is really interesting, not just theoretically, but, but can also be used in practice. Okay, so we have um, this, this uh, characterization of witnesses. And now if we want to, want to use this for, for, for instance, uh, detecting the entanglement dimension of a state, usually if we would do a measurement, a way to think about this is in terms of a hypothesis test. So if we think our state is d-dimensionally entangled, we could have the null hypothesis that it is at most d minus one dimensionally entangled that we now want to reject. Okay, so we can choose a POVM with, with uh, uh, two, two elements, M0 and M1, where M0 means we accept the null hypothesis and M1 means we reject it. Um, and then if, if um, we, we uh, the, the thing that kind of quantifies if our test is good is, is how many errors we make. Okay, so, so if for M0, we accept the null hypothesis, well, we don't want to do this, this on the state. We actually want to certify as d-dimensionally entangled. Um, um, so so, so uh, this is one of the errors we could make, the type two error. And the type one error is that, that we, could, we could think the state is d-dimensionally entangled when it is actually not, and the null hypothesis is true. So this is type one error. And then really what we want to do to design a good test is, is minimize those errors. Okay, now, why am I telling you this? Well, we can see that, that this constraint here, actually what we want to require is that E1 times the identity minus M1 here should be an entanglement witness for the dimensional entanglement, okay? And so what we can now do is we can, we can use this hierarchy of, of witnesses um, in order for each level here to kind of replace this constraint by requiring that, that the, the this, this operator here is of this form. Okay, and so in this way, for, for a particular state, we can, we can really uh, kind of optimize over, over different witnesses that, that, that would certify. Okay, um, there is one more thing we can do, and, and this is also in this paper. So it can be that we even have more restrictions. So at first, if we just optimize this, we get here some, some global POVM element, um, but maybe this is difficult to implement. So what we can then impose um, is, is uh, kind of restrictions that come from the setup. So for instance, it could be that we only have specific local measurements that we can do. And then we can require that, that this has a decomposition in, in certain specific measurements, for instance. So as long as these, these constraints that we impose here keep, keep this a semi-definite program, we can kind of use this hierarchy um, um, to, to optimize the, the tests we could make. Okay, and so I hope with this, I convince you that this is also a bit useful in practice. Um, and I'll come to the end. Uh, so I have a summary. Um, so the first thing I introduced are those unfaithful states um, where uh, we found that quite a large of class of states is actually of this, of this type. Um, and we have also looked at some, some properties. So, so something I didn't mention is for instance, that we can have uh, activation also, self-activation uh, in this case. But, but the fact that we have this characterization kind of also allows us to, to, to uh, then to, to look at those states uh, more. And then the second part was about this hierarchy for, for d-dimensional entanglement. Um, so we have this hierarchy and I, I also showed that from the dual, we can actually really, really uh, derive entanglement witnesses and also, also use them and, and maybe tailor them to, to a setup we want. 
Um, one thing I also want to, to mention just to finish. Um, so, I mean, of course, because this is not so new anymore, there also has also been follow up work by other authors. And especially for about unfaithful states, there, there have been several works I'm aware of. So, so these are two I know, and um, I'm sure there are also more. So uh, this is still ongoing and interesting. Um, and with this, I'd like to thank you. And this is all the people involved in the project doing gymnastics. Thank you, Miriam, for the very nice talk. Uh, there is um, one more question uh, from Remik. So it's, uh, what is the largest local dimension for which this hierarchy can be efficiently used? <laughs> um, this is a good question, actually. Actually not, no, okay, so, so I guess, okay, so maybe, okay, I can say, I, I, have, I, I actually don't know. <laughs> um, what I can say is um, that, uh, so, so the, the number of variables kind of comes, comes from this DPS hierarchy. And if we mm -hmm. do that, the hierarchy, so you have these expansions of, of, of one of the subsystems to more and then, and then a symmetrization. And now if you go to the, to the dual here, you have, have the dual of this hierarchy. Um, and, and the number of variables comes from, so, so the first level, if, if K is one is, um, the, the uh, which goes into this lambda um, is the um, is kind of a matrix of, of the dimension of, of the state plus the uh, the partial transpose of su such a matrix. So you kind of have have twice the, the number of variables that that your your matrix has. And then so if you want to stick to the first level, then 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 it will mean that that I think you can you can go up quite a bit, I don't know, no, depends how, how big the SDPs are you can solve, but, but this is, I think, where, where, where the, the most variables come from. Um, and yes, but if you want to go to higher levels, then what, what this would decompose as it is, is also um, um, further, yeah, this would, this would get larger and then you cannot go far. Um, so this is, yeah, I don't know. I could, I guess I could, I could look how far we went and, and what you could do maybe, maybe, Sorry, maybe later on. I don't know. On the that I, I may have missed myself. So in the experiment was D equal to four? What, what was D in the experiment? Yeah, so in, in this one. So the thing mm -hmm. is, we did something, something slightly, slightly, ah, in D you mean, okay. D, um, D, D, yes. So, so yeah, we did something, something slightly different because we actually, so, so this would be kind of a, a one shot experiment. Mm -hmm. And then you could say you do this once and then, and then you repeat this. And so, so I can find for one round a good witness, but I can also ask if, if I can kind of have a multi round witness um, for a specific setup, um, um, what happens in this case. And I think we did two or three rounds um, mm -hmm. for, this state actually, so so we did different states, but one of them is is this one that that I showed at some point here. And uh, so for the for the four dimensional entanglement. Four dimensional, yes. Okay, uh, thanks. So I would suggest that uh, we thank uh, Miriam again and thank all the speakers of this first morning session.